and welcome to your weekly oracle card guidance. Um, I'm here using the Anubis oracle and it reads here a journey into the shamanic mysteries of Egypt. It's by Nikki Scully and Linda Star Wolf and illustrated by Chris Walter. So there are three options today. Um, we have this here. And we have this. And we have the third option here. So it's option one, two and three. Please go ahead, make your selection and we can begin with reading. So for those of you who've chosen the first option here, we're asking what is your weekly oracle card guidance and what is the information that you need to hear today from the Anubis oracle? Where is the information that's coming out? We have a few cards that have flown out. I'm just going to put them back on the deck and continue to shuffle. So this card has a uh, composite energy and it's the number one of the cards of composite energies and um, it's called entering the mystery. And the composite energies of which it consists of is the dove, it consists of Nekbeth, Madhmut, and Nephthys, and Isis. And brings all these energies together to, to talk about how it is that we can harness these energies in order to work with what is before us and what lies before us at this moment. So there's very much um, a pathway ahead of you, a very much a pathway from which there's um, some kind of um, some kind of ceremony or ritual which requires you to ask if you could go into this or to take the permission to to enter this pathway. But what they're showing is that in order to be able to go deeper, to go um, a little bit further into the world that you're going to, into the, the pathway that you're going to, that there is a moment at which you need to ask for advice, ask for permission, ask whether it's okay, ask for the allowance to be able to go through. And here there is a sense that when you are, when you have asked for that permission, then it's almost as if you've been guided, you've been supported and you have all that you need. So I would say here that, um, that the 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 energy of this card is asking you to not be afraid to go further, not be afraid to go deeper, and to ask for assistance as you do so. So ask for heavenly guidance, ask for divine guidance, and and to be able to uh, to help you on your path, to be able to guide you, to be able to assist you, accompany on you on your path. I just want to go ahead and read what's uh, what's in the booklet that accompanies. Uh, this card. So let me just show you the booklet. Um, the booklet is very much similar to the uh, the, the deck, uh, the, the cover of the deck, I mean. And so we have uh, Entering the Mystery here. I'm just going to go ahead and read that. The dove represents the petitioner who's questing through the Anubis Oracle. The innocent, trusting dove flies to meet Nekbeth Madhamut. After offering the olive branch to the elder alchemist, the dove gains permission to enter into the shamanic mysteries of Egypt. Nephthys and Isis form the sacred archway through which the dove must go must pass to go deeper into the heart of Egypt and her mysteries. If you've drawn this card, consider how your current life situation reflects the actions of the Neteru pictured here. Something new and perhaps some and perhaps surprising is happening in your life, requiring you to take a chance or plunge deeply into the unknown. You have all the support and guidance that you need. So I feel that, you know, the space that you're in right now is very much that of a, um, a supported space. It's very much that of a divine space and one in which if you recognize that you are, a, that you are spirit, that you are um you have divinity in you, if you recognize your spiritual aspect, if you recognize your energetic aspect, 
then you will also see the support that you have around you that encourages you, that supports you, that helps you as you go along on your path. And you'll see the beacons um, that are there to kind of show you your path. I feel here that, you know, all the energy comes around to you right now and is supporting you in the decisions that you make as well as the path that you wish to go on you know you have the sun energy you have the moon energy you have the stars you have the 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 goddesses um the alchemists and it's up to you to be able to just walk through that path or just to choose to walk through that path and then also to have faith that all will be okay once you do so and that you are allowing yourself to be in the hands of that energy that will take you through and then and to surrender to that and I think in order to do that there needs to be a prayer there needs to be some kind of uh, communication between yourself and be between the Lord or the gods or however the divine force that you uh, acknowledge and just to be able to say well you know I want to go along this path I want to go deeper and please take me take me into this path please guide me as you go through as I go through and uh, show me the path and I rest in your hands as opposed to just kind of wandering blindly through the system because then you don't really understand uh, whether you are in good hands or whether you are in in danger in any way or form and so it's necessary to be able to recognize that when you uh, venture into uncharted territories that there needs to be some kind of permission given or some kind of recognition of your going through this path and however you wish to um, manifest that in the physical form whether it's just through prayer and through thought uh, or whether it's through some kind of ritual and an offering you're welcome to to find the way that you that resonates with you but just to acknowledge that as you enter as you go further and deeper right now as this energy allows you to that it's important to state that you're doing so and ask for the support that you need all right i'm going to leave that there i feel that the stone is also very much about venturing inward and um it's also very much about traveling astrally um, working with the energies going venturing deeper and so I feel that it it really um, resonates with the card and with the message and uh, yeah I wish you luck in the way that you're venturing in the in the the path that you 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 are taking if you're feeling afraid if you're feeling like you lack courage to go on this path take a moment to pray and to ask for that courage and to ask what what is blocking you what is stopping you because perhaps there's still a bit of healing that is needed before you can go deeper and perhaps that is what needs to be worked on first so take a moment to ask what it is what is necessary and um yeah and to go ahead uh, from there all right wishing you all the best as you go ahead in this week many blessings to you all and stay safe and healthy so for those of you who've chosen the second option here we're asking what is the guidance that you've come here to receive and what is the message that you need to hear from the Anubis oracle what is it that you need that guides you forward So for those of you who've chosen the second option, we have the card Konsu and it the caption reads lunar energies and uh, the supporting messages are divine timing and blood mysteries. So it's very interesting because I'm shooting this today on the full moon uh, that's in Libra. And whenever you come to visit uh, this oracle card guidance, it's this energy, this moon energy, not necessarily in the in the sign of Libra, but this lunar energy that's actually supporting you right at this time and and helping you in your path and to be recognizant of that to be recognizant of how the lunar um, phases and the lunar placement is is impacting your blood vessels is impacting the blood that runs through you is impacting all of your cycles menstrual and otherwise 
uh, and how it brings you forth in the world, how it propels you forward, how it positions you in a, in a place of rest when needed and how it asks you to work with the energy, to work with this lunar energy. So I think it's it's an important time to be able to recognize that it, that this lunar energy has a certain impact in your life and it's actually asking you to work with it. I feel here that uh, once you recognize the impact and you're able to track it, you're able to make notes of it, you will recognize the cycles that you go through in your new moon phase as well as your full moon phase as you go along and I'm on a lunar cycle and you'll see how it impacts you and you'll be able to prepare and work with the moon energies in the future as well um, and you'll understand how people respond to you differently during the different moon phases as well as how uh, what what is more likely to be possible during the moon phases and what isn't uh, likely to be possible in these times. So I feel that um, that that is what this energy is about. That's what this energy, this card is about. It's about asking you to work with the energies and then being cognizant of how the energies work and observing how the energies work and making note of that so that you can actually work with it more efficiently as you go along. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the message um, that's in the booklet that comes with it just in case it it gives you some more guidance as you go along in this week. And um, here's the booklet here. It has the same cover as the the the, the box that it came in. And it's the number 18, of course. It's Konsu. It says lunar energies, divine timing, blood mysteries, as is on the card. And it says Konsu is a lunar god who appears with as many faces as the phases of the moon. Like the moon, he controls the tides and influences the weather. He's closely linked with the Toth, and like Toth, is seen as both the, Ib the Ibis and the Baboon, known as the Wanderer. He is the protector of travelers and a measurer of time. Consul brings spiritual nourishment to our bodies and souls. He knows the exact timing in which we are ready to receive communion and to eat the flesh of the gods so that we may become as one of them. Consul works on our behalf to fertilize our minds and, and hearts with the seeds of our own divinity. He engages the power of the moon to bring to bring forth the healing rains that cleanse our old belief systems and he renews our DNA at a cellular level. He governs the tides of the oceans and human emotions. Konsu is a great healer, said to be able to exorcise demons. He does this by honoring, feasting and celebrating the diseases and they go away. If you've chosen this card, the time is now to move forward in some situation that you've been hesitant about. It is also favorable time for travel, Whatever movement has been called for, you may want to harness the power of ritual. Create a communion ceremony in honor of the divine being that you are. Acknowledge the journey that you have completed that has prepared you for the new phase you're entering. You can do this spiritually or bring it to the physical plane by setting up an altar with food that represents the body of the earth and the drink that represents the, div the blood of the divine Neturu. If you are in need of healing, honor the source of your disease, injury or situation for the teaching it has brought you as you take in the holy sacraments. So that's some interesting information in there and some really powerful um, uh, knowledge as as to how to work with disease, how to work with um, pain, how to work with um with one's bodily manifestations. So if you have any kind of disease, if you have some kind of manifestation of uh, imbalance in your body, uh, the, the advice here is to work with it, to actually uh, celebrate it and to honor it because it's come to give a message and it's really a messenger of what needs to be balanced, what needs to be healed, where it is that you are not okay in yourself. And it's it's the, it's that messenger that needs to be honored. It's that disease that needs to be celebrated in order to be acknowledged so that it can go away. And I think that's a really important message here. Uh, yeah, so if you are struggling uh, a bit physically or even emotionally, just to say thank you, 
to that and to, to celebrate it in order for it to be released as opposed to hold it in fear uh, close to you. The other message that came through there, which is, I think, um, I didn't pick up, but uh, I think it's an important message is that if you are traveling during this time, uh, to be able to take into account the moon uh, energy, the lunar energy, to ask for its guidance as you go along so that you can actually work with it and you're doing um, you're conducting your life in accordance with that moon energy. So I think it's very much about that. It's about conducting your life in accordance with the lunar energy and being cognizant of that of that moon energy. I also find it interesting here that the moon is seen in, in um, it's the moon god as opposed to the moon goddess. And uh, it's the same in the German, um, well, not in the German tradition, but in, 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 in the German language, uh, the moon has a male form and the sun has a female form. So I find I find that quite interesting uh, as well here. Uh, I think that what I take away from this is that you can't quite escape the moon energy. It's going to impact you whether you like it or not. So it's best to work with it and to best to be cognizant of it as you go along. And then also just to be aware that um, the cycles of the moon have positive aspects to it and growing aspects to it, the waxing aspects where fertility is is emphasized and then you have the waning parts and the and the new moon aspect of it which asks you to go within and recede to to go inside and to work with what's inside of you um i think also it's important to recognize that sometimes the full moons can actually have quite a um an irritable energy in that it can it can be quite a lot for people and so just to take that into account also when you're working with people or with relationships with with projects whatever it is that you're working with uh, whether you're traveling under the full moon just to be able to be aware of the influence that it might be having on you um or others all right so i'm going to leave you with that and i hope that's been a helpful message and uh yeah i wish you a very blessed week as you go along Please stay safe and healthy and blessed. Okay, for those of you who've chosen the third option here, we're asking what is the Oracle guidance for the week as we go ahead? And what is it that you need to know? What is it that you need to know from the Anubis Oracle? What have you come here to hear? And how can you go ahead and find your path with these cards? So what is your message as we go along? So for those of you who've chosen the uh, the third uh, option here, we have the number 14 and we have the goddess Hathor. And uh, the card reads magic, medicine, woman and integration. So I feel here that, uh, as I mentioned in the energy forecast that I put out, I think it was yesterday. I think here that this energy is talking about being able to create and being able to do so alchemically to be able to manifest what you desire into this world and to be able to use ritual, to be able to use herbs and whatever is available to you to be able to make this happen. So I think here that this energy, she brings about a feeling of being able to heal oneself, being able to create wellness in one's life, being able to bring forth uh, abundance or whatever your wishes are, whether it's just peace or abundance or opportunity by using herbs and using stones and using intention and working with it, working with it, you know, in a cauldron, working with it in a pot, um, melding together energies to be able to bring about the desired outcome. And I feel here that this is a, a great time for you to be able to do that. And that's the advice that you've been given. You've been told that you have everything that you need right now to be able to create the outcome that you desire. And even if you're not going to dabble in any of the the herbal arts <laughs> or any of that kind of uh, craft, I would suggest that you work with yourself to be able to create what it is that you desire in the next few weeks as you go along and just allow this energy to support you as you go through 
I feel here that what is being emphasized is that you have the strength, that you have the courage, and you have the power and all that you need to be able to make this happen. And that is the most important message here, that you can make this happen, you can create this, you can work with this. And I feel also that this energy is here right now, but it, um, it's going to be quite, um, you know, quite... Um, prominent at this time but as you go along it's going to drop and so the the message here is also to conjure up something that allows you to keep that momentum going in the next few weeks after this energy drops so even if you've come here at a different time um, then this video is uploaded if you come here at any time at all uh, and you found that um, yeah and you find that he you are in this energy where you can manifest quite easily you can create make sure to ensure that you take some of that and store it away so that you you can access it later on when it's not when the energy is no longer available in that way and then you need a little bit of help as you go along so I, as with the other uh readings what i've done is i've gone along and uh read a little bit from the book because i found it to be quite valuable uh, at this moment with this deck and with everything and so I'm going to go ahead and do the same for you so let me just show you the book um, this is the book here it's the same as the um, it has the same cover as the, the, the box and I'm going to go ahead and read number 14 which is Hatha magic so the card reads I'm sorry the booklet reads Beauty permeates the goddess of love and joy, celebration and intoxication. She is the cow goddess of the night sky whose nourishing milk streams forth as the Milky Way. In the lineage of the most ancient mother, Neith, who is sometimes depicted as a serpent who reaches inside of herself to pull out of all creation, an abiding sense of the benevolence of Neith is infused into Hatha, the medicine woman who integrates the light and dark into a magical blend of higher love and wisdom in her gold and silver chalice of healing. Her medicine resolves inner conflict. Anything lowly in form becomes divine when blended with her love. She has the power to bring you to the sacred marriage within, fostering unconditional love for yourself and others. When you are healed by Hatha's magic, you experience a peaceful yet powerful infusion of love. When she appears in her Lady of Beasts aspect, all of Earth's creatures feel blessed and safe in her presence and long to be close to her heart. If you've chosen this card, you have an opportunity to drink from Hatha's magical medicine chalice. As you focus on her loving presence, begin to resonate with the essence of the brew she's creating for you. A blend that includes the oppositions in your life combined alchemically to transform into unconditional love. Feel the healing power of love enter and flow through your being. Problematic situations, struggles and even strange relation, strained relationships can be transformed when you integrate Hatha's love. Hatha can also introduce you to your allies and al animal totems. When you pull this card, it's a good time to notice who comes into your conscious awareness. You might even find that a totem appears in your outer physical surroundings over the next few days. Watch for the magic so you can engage with it fully. So I have to say I've enjoyed reading from the book today um, and to be able to add to the or punctuate what I've been saying already and just to add to it. It's been I think I think perhaps you will find that useful. I think just to emphasize here the ability to here, here it's talking about Hatha giving you that okay in the book whereas I feel that here it's you've got to embody that Hatha energy and divine essence and vibration and to be able to create that in your own life and I think it doesn't necessarily require you to do any ritual or any any um concoction any potion or something like this but rather that you simply embody that vibration you pray with that vibration you simply invite the Hatha energy into your life in order to be able to magically dissolve any worries or struggles or any inconsistencies that may be in your life. So I think I'm going to leave you there because I feel that I've covered almost everything here. Let me just take a look at the card one more time. Yeah, 
Yeah, I feel here that you you already you're already in a state where you are um, bringing forth this energy, bringing forth this this wellness into the world and this this well being into the world and by your prayer and your good intentions and so i think it's a matter of just simply going along as you are right now but being conscious of the fact that right now is a time in which you can really bring it all together in that way in a very powerful way and there are good consequences that result from it if you do that all right i'm going to leave you with that and i'm wishing you all the best as you go along in this week um many blessings to you all and stay well and healthy and blessings abound from Kismet Rising.